Hi everyone, it's Laura and I hope you're all doing really well today and had great Christmases and great New Years. Today I'm going to be talking about what I read in the second half of December. If you'd like to see what I read in the first half, I'll leave a link in the description box along with links to all of the books I mention in this video, of which, unfortunately, there are only three. I am midway through listening to a book at the moment which I'm absolutely loving and I can't wait to talk about this in my next wrap up and that's Pain and Prejudice by Gabrielle Jackson and this is like a history of sexism, I suppose, and misogyny within women's healthcare, and it is just incredible. I'm loving it so much, I can't wait to talk to you all about it. Um, but I'm still kind of listening to it, I'm also midway through reading um, a different book um, and listening to another audiobook as well, so I'm a bit, you know, Christmas and all the festivities got in the way a little bit, but I have three excellent books to talk to you about today anyway. Do you know what? I'm mental. I actually have two books to talk to you about. Um, I had this on my pile, Your House Will Pay, and I just looked at it and I thought, I was about to start talking about this book, and I thought, I've definitely already reviewed this. And I did, because I read it um, in the first part of December, and it's already been talked about in a video. I mean, it's very good, it's very good. Um, but I won't talk, talk to you about it again, because I already have. So, a much quicker video than I thought, in fact. So, the first one I have here is The Harp of Kings by Juliet Marillia, which I was reading along with Jean and Jill. This is a new series. Haha, -ha, not just all the old stuff by Juliet Marillia. This is a new, new series that's just come out, and it's set... I want to say like 20 years after the Blackthorn and Grimm series, which is what we've, we've been reading all together and really enjoying. And this in a way feels very much like a continuation of that series. Um, before we had Blackthorn and Grimm who were forced to help people, so they're going around with the different locations, solving mysteries essentially within this um, med like imagined medieval Irish setting, magical setting. And in this book we are following some young people who are training to become Swan Island warriors. Um, so Levin and Brock, who are brother and sister, and a other, another young man called Dow, who are sent away on this mission, and the warriors have to, you know, solve mysteries and help out different communities. So I feel like this is going to be quite a similar series. And it was good. I'm not sure I enjoyed it quite as much as Blackthorn and Grimm, because I don't think I really, really got into the characters as much. But, you know, this is a brand new series, these are new people that we're meeting. In this book, our warriors are called to help a kingdom where the legendary Harp of Kings has been stolen, and this harp has to be played on the coronation of the king, otherwise the people will not accept that the, the man is going to be king, or something like that. So they have to find this harp, and they don't know who's taken it. Um, so there's, en there's enough kind of courtly intrigue um, and working out exactly what happened and who took it and why. And there's a little bit of elements of fairies and the kind of the other world and other beings as well. Um, and I enjoyed, I think I enjoyed more of the intrigue between the different human characters and what was happening at court, learning about all the different people in this world. I enjoyed that a little bit more than the bits that take place kind of in the other world with the fairies and that, that kind of magical bit I don't think was as strong in this book as it has been in some of um, her previous ones I've read, but it's just, it's just fun. It's just enjoyable. They're such like light, easy reads, these books. And I also like that they have that element of mystery in there and like all of our characters know different things and are hearing different things and you're sort of piecing it together at the same time as them. Um, so I just, I just enjoy the ride, to be honest. And the other book that I read in the second half of December is Under the Skin by Michelle Faber, which complete, I really loved this book. It completely threw me sideways. I had no idea what to expect. This is about a young woman who trawls along the different highways of Scotland um, in the Highlands, picking up hitchhikers, often late at night. And when she picks them up, she takes them back to her little farm where she works with some other people. And you, and that's it. And you, and for a really long time, you don't know why she's picking up these people, what what's happening to them, what she's doing to them. And I really don't want to say very much about this book at all because part of finding out what's going on is really the joy of the surprise. But I'm so impressed at how this book built built up the suspense, built up the surprise. I really, really wanted to understand who she was, who these people were at this farm, like what she was doing with these people and, and why they needed to be a certain build. It's so well structured that you really don't find out, I think until at least halfway through, if not like two thirds of the way through, you don't get the full picture, but that's fine. You're still so engaged with it. Um, and I just loved the, the kind of twist. It's a really interesting look at the concept of what it means to be human, I suppose, and empathy with, with other people and other people's lives. I guess that's sort of the only real theme I can drop in there without spoiling it, but I, I thought it built to a climax really well. I think the only thing I would say is right at the end of the book, after you've found everything out, 
it is a little bit like well what could possibly happen now because because i found out everything and you know I've, how, how could this plot continue i think there was a little bit right in the last couple of chapters where i was a bit like I don't, i'm not sure where this book is going to go and how it's going to resolve itself but apart from that it's just so crazy and bizarre and wild and like I loved the journey that, <laughs> that this book took me on. So since I had fewer books than I thought I'll go through what I'm currently reading as well. So one of the things I'm reading at the moment is If You Could Be Mine by Sara Farizan and this is a gay love story between two young girls who are living in Iran and I think Sara Farizan is from Iranian parents but she's like but they emigrated to the US so she's American Iranian and it's so far I'm really liking it it's, it's I'm flying through it so so far we have two teenage girls they're hiding their relationship because homosexuality is illegal one of them Sahar wants to go to university and her girlfriend Nazreen has just announced that she's going to get married so there's a lot of turmoil going on they're not, not sure how they want to live their lives and at the moment um Sahar is kind of learning about this sort of LGBT underworld that her cousin is involved in and other people who are who are against the norm and against the, the system I suppose as well um, and she's kind of learning about what it is to be transgender or transsexual as they're calling it in here and that how that that's actually legal in Iran because I think they're fixing gay people by um, changing their genders and so she's sort of just at the moment learning about this entire world that she had no idea about and sort of struggling with what she's going to do with Nazreen so it's uh, you know I'm loving, I've only started reading this like a couple of days ago and I'm, I'm really, really far through it already. Um, so this will be an interesting one. And as I said at the beginning, Pain and Prejudice is the audiobook that I've been listening to, which I am just so loving. It came out of the struggle that the author had to get her endometriosis diagnosed and treated. Essentially, she wrote some articles, I think in The Guardian, she's Australian, and those articles about endometriosis have done really well, and she's sort of built and built her research, and the result is this book. But she doesn't just talk about um, female biological issues. She talks about all kinds of pain, like chronic pain, chronic fatigue syndrome, lots of things that present more in women than men and how they have such little funding. She talks about the history of hysteria and the idea of women being diagnosed with hysteria historically. Um, through, like she, she kind of goes through all the different ages and when it was trendy to refer to it as the vapors and when it was hysteria and when it was depression and how men and women got different diagnoses even when they presented with very similar um, symptoms. So as always, I'd love to hear from you if you've read any of these books. And um, there's not that many that I've mentioned, so. I'm sure there will not be that many comments that come in, but I'd like to hear what you've been reading in December anyway. Do you like read seasonal books? Do you read Christmassy books? Because I don't really, I don't really find myself getting into, into phases of what I read, which means it's all, it's all wide open for January. I've got no idea what I'm going to pick up next. Although I will be doing a TBR video shortly, which will give me a bit of structure from January through to March. So I will see you in that video and hope you have a really nice day, rest of the day, whatever you're doing. <laughs> Bye.